This is the remote outback of Australia. One hell of a hot desert. Over 40 people a year die in these harsh conditions, where temperatures reach up to 125 degrees. We're 500 miles away from the closest city, in one of the most desolate, waterless places in the world. Behold, beware, the mining town of Coober Pedy, Australia. It just might be the most extreme town in the entire world. When you fly in over Coober Pedy, you look down from the plane, it looks like Mars. And you think to yourself, how can anyone ever live down there? Above ground, Coober Pedy looks like your average mining town, dotted by large mounds of rubble evacuated from the mines. But it's not just digging that goes down underneath, because 60% of this town is actually 8 to 22 feet below the surface of the Earth. It's like the Flintstones meets the Jetsons out here. Down below, it's absolutely fantastic. Living underground, it's different though, but yeah, it's normal. Nowhere in the world do they have a place where you can eat, drink, sleep underground, like in Coober Pedy. So how did it all start? In 1914, 15-year-old William Hutchinson and his father were looking for gold when they discovered a massive amount of opal below. So people from all over Europe began settling the land, hoping to strike it rich in the mines. But to survive the harsh desert climate, they had to live in the mines too. The temperatures we get here, 125 Fahrenheit in the shade during summer. Physically, you just can't live above ground. The name Cooper Pedy comes from the Aboriginal Cooper Pity, which means white man's hole. Because when the Aborigines came here and they saw us white guys living in holes in the ground, they thought we were living in burrows like rabbits. The name stuck. So in 1920, the local mining association officially named the town Cooper Pedy. Today, it's the opal capital of the world. And mining is still its primary industry. I'm a miner during the day, uh, bartending during the night. I've lived in Kibipiti for 24 years. During the week, we go out looking for, for opal. This is my 23rd year here. I'm original from Hungary. So what did Cooper Pedy build underground? It's got two underground churches and a local underground bar. So how was the beer, actually, at the end? It was good. Aptly named the Desert Cave. But most mind-blowing are the 1,500 underground family-sized homes built right into a 7,000-acre expanse of Australian sandstone hills called dugouts. With a small bulldozer, residents hollow out the hills to create their dream houses. All the entrances to the dugouts are above ground, like in our man Merv's crib. Welcome to my dugout home in Coober Pedy. You can tell it's a dugout because of the air shaft sticking out so you can breathe. We only have one door in and out, and this is it. Claustrophobic? No worries, mate. Each dugout has support pillars about 40 inches thick, cement floors, and natural air shafts for ventilation. The very front rooms in your dugouts is always the kitchen because you can't have any water inside any further in your dugout. There's no sewerage in Cooper Pedy, so your bathroom is always on the ground level and the rest of the dugout is a lot deeper underground. This house that I live in is pretty average for Cooper Pedy. This is a four bedroom house. It's over 65 years old. And this is the original entrance here. This is how the miners got here in the first place. They dug their way down here by hand. There are footholds and handholds each side of the shaft to hang on to as they climb down here. Nope, these aren't some bare bones caves. If you want something like a wine rack, you just drill some holes in the wall, like I've done over here. That's right. It's a real do-it-yourself project. So when you need an addition on the house, just start drilling for more space. If your family grows any, bring a jackhammer home and jackhammer a new bedroom out for them. Hope it's a quiet jackhammer. 
And some of these dugouts are actually on fault lines. You heard right, fault lines. As you can see up on the ceiling, you'll see like a distinctive line, dark line that goes up through the centre of the whole room. Well, this here is a fault line. To be, have a decent sized underground home is very enjoying. And you can be uh, so relaxed and in a, a nice sort of cooler or warmer environment. It's just really funny to sleep in a, under the ground. If the time ever came when I do leave, unfortunately, I just can't bring a front end loader in and pile up me home and take it away with me. But who'd want to leave, especially with the unexpected benefits? You don't get any peeping toms because most of them don't have any windows at all. You don't have to clean your windows. And the good thing about that is you can have a rave down here. You can have the Rolling Stones come over and play. You don't get any complaints from your neighbors. It is soundproof. And an even bigger perk, the beautiful natural resources inside the walls. Some people are very lucky when they're building their homes, they actually find opal. The best find was a motel in town. They found $360,000 worth of opal while they were doing a couple of new rooms. So that's paid for itself already. There's a friend of mine that uh, most of his life has lived in this dugout and his mother-in-law was coming to visit and his wife was at him and at him and at him to cut the extra step because poor mum couldn't do the step. So they cut the step and got about $1.2 million worth of green opal. Yep, Cooper Pedy ain't like any other town. It's so unique, in fact, that it's been the backdrop of big budget films like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome and Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. It's pretty funny because you look like to be in a kind of Terminator movie or apocalyptic movie. No, it's not the end of the world. It's just an extreme town underneath it. Yeah, I think we should have a beer or something like that when we get down here. I can't think why not. <laughs>